Kyle, I love Lego. Uh, how did you get that Lego Voltron spot? And yeah. it's like, we just are awesome. Started getting picked up by LA Times and USA Today and Wire Magazine. We ended up having a few viral videos. Film investing is probably one of the riskiest investments out there. Yeah. Uh, only five or 6% of movies make money. Title, what rhymes with reason is that, what is the rhyme and reason that any of us are here? Why do you think you're here? I don't know, why are you here? What is this? Number two cause of death between 10 and 16 year olds is suicide, is taking their life. We are naturally people of comparison, even though we may not want to, uh, you know, uh, admit that right. we are. Yeah. And you can open up six different apps and you're comparing yourself to your friends or other people or whatever. Yeah. Uh, is dangerous. Well, uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Be Frank Podcast, episode 29. Today, we have a special guest, movie director Kai Roberts. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much. And then, uh, you know, I know I don't know if you guys know this, but we have a new teal curtain. If uh, people talk about, yeah, <laughs> people talk about orange and teal, right? But also, like, you have blue stuff and this, like, a nice Blue Shark Kingdom Media Club. And then, yeah, it's been for a while. Um, I saw you last. It's been a minute, man. Yeah. So what you been up to? Uh, just making movies and, yeah. you know, commercial works. Yeah. Same as you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were telling me about that. You know, you started making YouTube like videos, right? Like right now, like six months ago, I just started making YouTube video. Okay. But you start making, you were like 21, 22, right? Yeah. Like, can you kind of tell me about it? Well, I think as creators, we're going to create. I mean, that's just kind of, you know, in our system and who we are. Yeah. And so, yeah, right out of college, I, YouTube was pretty fresh at the time. So this is showing my age a little <laughs> bit. But we just started creating stuff. We started playing with stop motion, started learning uh, a new um, form of animation, new form of storytelling. Uh, we made some fan-made stop motion stuff and started getting picked up by LA Times and USA Today and Wire Magazine. It ended up having a few viral videos yeah. and that kind of just set the stage uh for what what was next and millions of views like yeah. uh <laughs> you know like i don't know if you want to share this the secret you just told me you know what i mean yeah 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 so a lot of people think you know i'm gonna well, t even today like tiktok or instagram whatever like i'm gonna make something it's gonna it's gonna go viral this next one this next video is gonna go viral right. and that's not you know really the case you know, maybe you get lucky because you're hitting a song that's about to pop uh as a trend or you're doing a trend or a prank or something maybe yeah but uh a much more effective way to do it and how i did it uh then is we didn't have we didn't have a, really an audience we just started the channel uh we didn't really know have a lot of press contacts or anything like that or influencers that could help us push it out or whatever so i just started emailing other press that had written about other similar stop motions and just sending a two two sentence uh two sentence email that's like, hey, I saw that you wrote this article about you know this video and I think your audience would dig this video. And then nice. linked it and then put like a splash image, you know, something really dope and fun and they'll, they'll click it. Cause most press get, you know, one page, four page press release of all this stuff that they're gonna get to whenever they have time. Yeah. But if it's just, and present it in the, in the, the space of their audience because mm. they they all have like la times you know reporters have huge yeah. audiences yeah. but they're they're normally not approached that way normally approach yeah you're going to write about this this thing this big thing that i'm doing right but if you just say hey you know i think your audience would dig this video i saw that you wrote this then it's already saying you've done your research you understand what they what they've written about in the past and that they would enjoy this and and then we started getting picked up all over the place and then once la time and wired and you know these other big big blogs and publications write about it then so many others write about it the snowball yeah, effect snowball effect <laughs> so how did you find that email like is that email on the article yeah so i guess part of this is from my news background i started at the oklahoma and news okay so yeah. local you know paper uh but you know we would get press releases all the time and i'm like i'm never gonna read any of these because it's just <laughs> a bunch of text and boring you know yeah unless the the title is really good or whatever um so I, I just had that approach. It's like, okay, well, who's the features person? So even just Google searching. So for us, it was like stop motion animation, LA Times. You might find an article and then look at who wrote that article and find their email. Gotcha. And, and most news stations have their email on their site. Oh, it makes sense. Yeah. It's kind of same thing as like YouTube, right? Like you, you have to have like 
good title and a good thumbnail right. to like get views. <laughs> right, absolutely. Yeah. It's like getting a press release <laughs> is the kind of same thing. It's kind of funny to me because like how I get asked a lot of people the question like, how did you, how did I uh, get clients? Mm. I just kept emailing, you yeah. know, I emailed, emailed, emailed. And then also I uh, pick up the phone, you know, yeah. say, hey, I want your business. You know, and then it's part of the grind that no one, <laughs> no one wants to talk about. But <laughs> yeah. if you're passionate about it and believe this yeah. is your, I, don't know, I said my like my purpose and my you know voice and all mm. these things. Yeah, you're gonna do it. Yeah, for sure. So whenever you worked at the news station, right, and then you start you making a YouTube video at the simultaneously. Yeah. So yeah, same time, just kind of nice and weekends. You know, we just started. I started playing with action figures and playing with toys and, and making <laughs> stuff, and then yeah. Rest is history. And then, like, uh, you made a post-human movie. Was that your first feature? That was my first feature, yeah. And if you guys haven't heard of Post-Human Project, uh, it's a teen superhero movie we made for $100,000. It's made about three times that today, which is great uh, for any movie to, to oh, actually man. make money. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like, th that kind of came about because all of, all of this press that were writing about us about the time, their number one question was, like, you know, we love your content. Like, when's when's the feature coming? <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh crap, <laughs> I better think about what we want to do. And Matt Price, which was our writer uh, for Post Human Project, and we worked at the Oklahoma, and, you know, he was, I was like, we should make a, a, a teen, you know, superhero movie that's kind of in, in the voice of John Hughes, but with superpowers. And he's like, I kind of have an idea of these teenagers that go camping and all right. this that goes on. And, and we just, we worked on it. And four years later, <laughs> we had, <laughs> we had a movie. Four years later, huh? Four years later. Right. Yeah, that, that was a great movie. I Thank mean, you. like, I worked on, like, a little bit. I helped a little bit of yeah. the set or whatever. Yeah. But how did you guys make made money from that movie? So that was 100% crowdfunded. Yeah. So as a, I think it was actually slightly under $100,000, but about a $100,000 budget. We did different crowdfunding uh, campaigns. Uh, I, we kind of skipped over this, but I've also uh, directed a bunch of local music videos. I know you do a lot of music videos, too. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was a way I was also kind of finding my voice and in, in what I could do and so, you know, very visual kind of music video style stuff. So um, we did concerts with bands, you know, that we'd done videos for and stuff like that. And so we'd have, you know, hundreds of people come out to a concert to see them. Yeah. And we'll also talk about this film that we're doing <laughs> and raise physically raise like actual dollars there. And we also did Indiegogo kind of crowdfunding stuff and gotcha. to, to, to get to the. So you made a hundred thousand dollars and then you made a movie yes. and then the movie made money too. Correct. So was that from the distribution or. Right. Yeah, so we ended up, we had, we actually almost had like a, a bid war kind of thing once we were done with our film. So we released the film. We did the festival circuit for about a year. Uh, we started at Dead Center, one Dead Center. Then our next, very next screening was at San Diego Comic Con, <laughs> which was awesome. Yeah. Uh, and this did, like, it wasn't, we never, you know, did South by Southwest or, you know, it wasn't anything that, that huge kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But Comic Con was huge for us for a superhero mm -hmm. film. Uh, and then they even um, flew us out to Okinawa Comic Con in Japan. Oh, uh, really? So, so yeah, so that was actually the time in my life I felt like the biggest celebrity so far because <laughs> they didn't know who I was. And it, was it was so fun because uh, it was me, a Marvel Comics writer, and a DC Comics artist. Huh. And we were the three like on the their brochure. Nice. <laughs> so for three days, I was just signing autographs and taking pictures with everybody because they thought <laughs> I was as big of a deal as they were. And little did they know I was just a little independent filmmaker. <laughs> but it was so fun. And yeah. it was uh, it was a blast being there. I didn't know Okinawa you know, had a Comic Con. They do, yeah. It's, they have a, uh, a actually an Air Force base there. Oh, gotcha. And so that's a big part of their community and what it is. And and so we went and you know checked out the. Uh, I love seeing the. Um, Aquarium, the huge yeah. Okinawa Aquarium. They yeah. have like two massive uh, tiger whale sharks <laughs> or whatever. They're just crazy, but yeah. So then you went to a film circuit and yes. then you get picked up by some uh, company or something? Distributor, yeah. yeah. So we, yeah, that's what, so that's what kind of what I was talking about is we end up kind of having a bid war in, uh, I don't know if I can say all the other studios, but we ended up going with um, Gravitas Ventures. So if you see them, they, they, they pick up a lot of independent stuff. It's like the napkin that says Gravitas Ventures on it or whatever. But um, they picked up our film. They got it on every major kind of streaming service, and we're still getting picked up other things. We found out it was at Paramount, Paramount Plus just a few months ago, added to that. So even nine years ago, it's still getting picked up in different territories, uh, different countries, and different platforms. I always wondered, like, whenever you get picked up by those companies, yeah. Do you get like a massive check at once or like do you just like get percentage of like a streaming or what? Yeah, that's that a really work? good question. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of people don't know this too. I don't know. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, it depends on the deal. So typically 
excuse me, typically Netflix is is a is an all at once kind of thing, mm. and then they own all, all rights forever uh, for, on everything. They like to have licensing rights, royalty, it's just everything. They, that, that's it. You will never get another dime besides that purchase. Gotcha. And typically, it's a it's a fairly higher number. Uh, then the standard film series world, everything like that is a MG minimum guarantee. So say if it's, it's Paramount or Sony or, uh, whoever they'll pick it up for a certain amount. Uh, so say for a very independent film like that, it may be $10,000. So that's 10,000 of our hundred K, but then they, we split the profits, um, from them therefore. Gotcha. And they'll also work on every country is a separate territory. So then they might sell it to Spain. They might sell it to Japan. They might sell it to China. You know, they might sell it to all these different places. Uh, and then each one of those might be on independent films, a $5,000 deal, another $10,000 deal, a $20,000 deal kind of thing. And then you get that every time they make a deal. Then then we get a percentage of that. Yeah. Gotcha. Of so both human made three times than initial investment. That's pretty good money. Right. <laughs> pretty good yeah pretty good for for what it was for sure yeah yeah so uh i guess uh we have a beer <laughs> i mean we a have a couple beers yeah, yeah we haven't done this for a while so my intention is to somebody to sponsor me this podcast <laughs> but uh which one do you do you well, want they're open? both stone cloud right yeah so stone cloud you're watching we've done some video work for stone cloud oh, you nice. sponsor yosuke's podcast <laughs> well I'm gonna try Chuck Norris. Okay, let's both do it. All right, is that cool? Yeah. Spoiler: I've already had this. It's really All right, good. cheers. Hi, right, brother. What is this? It's a pale ale. Pale ale. <laughs> Yosuke doesn't like pale ales. <laughs> I think a little bit bitter. Mm -hmm. I like a lager or blonde beer. You know. You're but probably not an IPA fan. No. Yeah. <laughs> F five. I mean, my business partner yeah. JC, he loves F five, and yeah. like, but uh, I just can't drink it. Right but Honey Toad by Coop, <laughs> yes, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, because that's uh, yeah, Honey Toad's really good. Yeah. What kind of what kind of beer do you like? I like all kinds of beers. Actually, IPA are some of my favorite. Oh really? Uh, so F five so is another one of my favorites. Uh, I like a lot of hazy IPAs. Gotcha. Because it doesn't quite have the hops that that you would expect in an yeah. IPA. Probably don't reason you probably don't like it yeah so if you haven't tried a hazy mm. try it there's there's several local companies that have hazy ipas damn do you guys use uh i guess your film you like if you make a family movie so you don't put beer in the movie we actually have a local beer uh in this film what rhymes yeah. with reason yeah what did you put i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> our uh yeah our marketing and um props team did that yeah, because I wish it, I, knew, I had that. I had that. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. I mean, we'll put it on insert somewhere. I think. Oh, it's it OK pills. OK pills. That was the beer. Yeah. OK, because of because uh, uh, it's interesting to me, right? Because of American Advertising Association or, or whatever, they put they can't drink on the commercial, mm. right? Like the, if you're drink, uh, doing like a tequila commercial or beer commercial, people can drink on the uh, commercial, right? But in Japan, you can like, uh, oh, yeah. we hear like Ichiro, like, you know, making yeah. noise and then drinking beer. Right. Right. But like a film, you can show people like drinking. Right. I don't know what why that is. Do you know? Yeah, I don't know either. Maybe <laughs> it's if it's directly related mm -hmm. to them and what they're f physically sponsoring gotcha. versus a um, what you're talking either product placement or like brand integration. It's yeah. probably more what it's about now. Yeah. Then it's not like directly representing them that, that makes, makes sense. sense yeah i mean yeah so i mean it's just a lot of different rules and different <laughs> stuff and it's kind of interesting to me you know like what we learn of the film stuff like you can't use people's logos and all that right. kind of stuff and then you get brand deals you make money yeah you might get sued i think it's interesting but uh yeah. let's uh let me let me know about um uh, this kingdom media club yeah so kingdom media club is a nonprofit we started actually beginning of COVID, <laughs> uh, and it's our, it's our, yeah, so nonprofit, the main, um, purpose of it is to provide fiscal sponsorship for family friendly films right mm -hmm. here in, made right here in Oklahoma. So when what do you mean physical sponsorship, uh, fiscal sponsorship. So basically, um, people can donate to kingdom media club and then, um, we, w we use that money to pour into movies so they can donate and it's actually a tax write off for the individual versus an, an, an investment which is them 
you know, putting all of their money into it and hoping that it, it has a return. This is a donation and is a tax write off for them. Got you. So this uh, donation is that go to your movie or like a. Um so that's, this first one was for What Rhymes With Reason. That's kind of why we started it. And we really kind of did it as a necessity. Two things. One is, is to give those two options for people. So, And a lot of people in Oklahoma, they still don't know what film investing is. And right. they don't really want to take the risk because they, they don't understand it. You know, They don't understand uh, the business of it yet. Yeah. You know, we're still fairly new here. Yeah. Uh, and and the, the more that ha- we're, man, we're like right here on this is a whole other thing. But <laughs> as far as. You know the the biz, the creative side is getting better and better and better, and that's kind of what this this show is about. You know, yeah. and, and what you guys do too. And then the business side is like learning more and more. And I feel like we're at that crosshairs where the more the business side jump on and take those leaps of faith with us and see that it works and make money, then we're going to be able to have investors all the time. But when we first started talking to people, you know, the thing we current like consistently hear is you guys do great work you know, I just don't know this business and I need to kind of like stay in my lane. Like they just, they don't understand the business of mm. making movies and gotcha. the return on making movies. And so they just, uh, didn't want to do it, you yeah. know, kind of thing. But Oklahomans do know, uh, of donate, uh, uh, donations and a lot of where their heart is too, of, of donating to good causes, you know, gotcha. kind of thing. So when we start Kingdom Media Club, it's like that that is an, an option that people have where they can donate and they won't ever see a return on it, but it is a tax write-off for them. And so that is the the benefit kind of thing. So the good cause we're talking about uh, mental health, right? Yes, sir, like yeah. uh, let's let's talk about a little bit about this movie. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So May, uh which is when this will release, is mental health month, yeah. mental health awareness month. And so it's man, it's just I've been so excited for this movie and passionate about it for a long time. We we spent five years writing the script. Five years. And then a year and a half um, fundraising and financing for it. You say you're not a writer, though. I'm not a writer, so I said my team. So actually, <laughs> my nephew wrote it. His name's oh, Sean really? Deason. And I've, I've trained him as directing and shooting and yeah. editing and stuff since he was you know a kid. Uh, now he's in L.A. and a great writer and, and making his own name out there. Yeah. Right? But he so he and I are kind of like the main two voices, I'd say, in this uh, together mm-hmm. of crafting this story and and kind of um, earning the right to be heard um, from youth and families. And that's that was kind of our approach for this whole film. Is that how did it come about? Like you guys are like, a, I don't know, like chatting in the basement or like <laughs> chatting at the bar or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Your, how old is your, you know, nephew or whatever? Yeah, he's uh, he's 28. Okay. So yeah. maybe like drinking beer yeah. together. Like how did you like a conversation was like initially like, hey, I'm going through some stuff. Let's yeah. make stuff. Or like what was the initial conversation? Was? Well, for this, this film in particular, actually, it kind of started uh, based on started based kind of loosely based on the story of Job from the Bible where he's you know this righteous man that had everything and his whole life gets stripped from him and then uh, throughout a lot of trial and error it all work, kind of works out for him but like his, his whole family dies and everything is this whole tornado basically goes through his life in Oklahoma terms like literally yeah. rips his whole life upside down uh, and and he was very much tested you know through all of that and then makes out of it and I kept thinking about that and Anytime I was in a sermon about the story of Job or whatever, I felt like God, the Holy Spirit, was like, there's something we're going to do here. Remember this. Remember this story. Uh, and so when it finally came around and after a post-human project, we're like, this this story of, of a suffering one uh, who is blameless, like it had everything going right for them and, and their whole life just gets flipped upside down, mm. is the story to do, but in high school world. Um, in a high school world. And so that we started this a long time ago, but then once COVID happened, everything else like teen depression, anxiety, all of these things really started getting on a major, major rise all over the world, uh, especially in the U S and th- that's when we finally realized like we have to do this movie. So like you post human was high school too, right? But this yeah. is like a teenager mental health. Why is that teenager like a era in the high school era is important to you? Uh, yeah, so c- coming of age stories is something we really gravitate towards. Even on all the commercial work we do is for youth and families and stuff like that. Uh, I just, I think it's really interesting. So I really gravitate towards stories of identity and purpose. And that for most people, I mean, there's other coming of age at other parts of our lives, right? <laughs> We're trying to figure out who we are <laughs> yeah. and what it is. But I feel like at that age, when you're, I don't know, 15, 16, you have your license, you have more responsibilities, but there's no, there's not quite a, 
path of like to tell you how to, what to do and what to you know you have to True. you really have to figure it out where you fit yeah. either in your high school with different groups or cliques or whatever but just in the world what where do you fit in the world yeah how does this work so i i re, i've always even ninja turtle stuff like the heart of the ninja turtles <laughs> is is a story of identity and purpose yeah and them just trying to it, but by what i love about it the ninja turtles is it's not black or white or any social economic structure it's just four turtles, you know, and, yeah. and, and everything that they do there. Anyway, the, but I, I definitely always gravitate towards that. And that's what this film is, What Rhymes With Reason. And that's even the title, What Rhymes With Reason, is that what is the rhyme and reason that any of us are here? Mm. And so that's what they try to explore in this film and going on this big epic adventure into the wilderness together. Why do you think you're here? I don't know. Why are you here? Oh, I mean, like, <laughs> I, I do ask that a, a lot about that question to myself, you know? Yeah. And then like, it's like, um, you know, I, I think mental health and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's very, very interesting to me yeah. because of, uh, you know, I lost my friends and stuff uh, because of that. And then drug use and addiction, it mm -hmm. comes down to mental health. Yeah. And then also myself, like I do train like MMA and fighting and stuff. Right. But mental health and strength is something that you can't just like leave it out. Mm. Then like you have to deal with it. You have to be get strong. You have to get better at like I, I think that, you know, a lot of men's like, well, you're a man tough, tough it out or whatever. Yeah. And then I do go to therapy and yeah. I do read a lot of books and right. then I do read a lot of that kind of stuff. So I don't know, just like why am I here? Like, you know, those kind of questions, like a simple question, yeah. but it's kind of hard to answer. Sure, you know? right. Like, even like in the therapy session, I do think uh, we, we do talk about that. Like, right. what what's your purpose? You know, right. what's that? And all that kind of stuff. And then my purpose is recently being like helping other people brings me happiness. And then like you're telling me about, you know, a lot of teenage kids or even like young adult or like young career people, uh, people who are trying to like, change careers right yeah. or like they don't even know before they go to college they don't even know can make money in movies mm -hmm. independent films or doing youtube or doing like a, becoming a beekeeper or whoever whatever right. right so that's the kind of reason i'm doing this podcast too is yeah. that to showcase here is a possibility maybe you might like it you might not you know but as long as like you do like a research and then you can go to the right path you know what right. i mean so in a way, I'm doing that in the podcast in this like a small little place. But, you know, for you, like you're doing that with the solid message with big screen. So I think that's like very respectful. And then like a lot of people watching it, I think it's like I think it's cool to see your growth from you. like a you too, man. post human you too, yeah. to like this. And like, you know, now it's like I saw like, um, you know, like your uh, actress and involved and all that kind of stuff, everything level up, you know? Like, yeah. I think it's super cool. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll send you um, the trailer if you want to use it in some of this stuff. Oh, yeah, for it's sure. It's not released, but if you use, like, a shot or two, okay. you can show all, the quality of all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but, like, tell me about, like, what, why is uh, mental health imp important to you? Yeah, so mental health is very important to me, um, mainly from my sister. Uh, growing up, uh, I felt like I always had to kind of walk around eggshells around her. Uh, she was a great big sister. She was, you know, uh, most of the time, uh, very loving, very supportive, all these things. But um, she would just flip out, you know, and I, did, I didn't understand, you know, it's like, am I, am, I, am I doing something wrong? Like, is it, you know, I didn't know what was going on. And then it wasn't until she was in her 30s where mm -hmm. she was diagnosed bipolar and then also severe depression. And now she takes medication for both of those things. But that was very eye opening, um, obviously for her, yeah. but for us and as a family, and, and, and even me personally, it completely looked at all of that differently it, yeah. because it is, it was a chemical imbalance and not nothing else. Yeah. And so that, that, um, I'm gonna start crying, but <laughs> it's really important for me to, for people to realize that. And that's told actually through one of our characters, Savannah, who's Jesse's sister, um, is that even at the very beginning of our movie, she's str struggling majorly with anxiety, um, and pills she's taking other things and. I don't want to get into the, t too much of the story, but uh, we really highlight all of those things in a film that is family-friendly and in a family-friendly safe space uh, because uh, number two cause of death between 10 and 16-year-olds is suicide, is taking their life. So now, and, and that's, that's recent numbers. I mean, it wasn't that young 
Um, so now we are, uh, you know, who knew that we actually needed a film like this that was family friendly. It's not the approach of 13 reasons why, which I think is a ter terrific show, but some people may say, um, glorify suicide, you know, to a, to a, to a degree, glorify suicide, uh, What's 13 that? reasons why have you seen that show on Netflix? Uh -uh. So they have a, at least two or three seasons of it, but, um, it basically, it, it was a, a popular book before that, but a teen commits suicide, but she writes down and records these like audio tapes of the reasons why she committed suicide and basically mm -hmm. shames all of these other people and all these other things. And so it's almost this like revenge story of even after she's gone. Is that a real, um, real story? Damn. I think so. Oh. Yeah. And so it, it was, uh, it is very needed by the way. These are the, our film and that show and so many other things are coming out are the, a similar need. Uh, the need is is to so the main need of this film is to encourage more conversations about mental health uh, in life and faith and you know all of these things. Yeah. Uh, but we we're choosing to tell it through this like family friendly adventure lens. Yeah, I mean like, uh, why do you think those teenagers like suicide rates going up? Do you think it's because of social media or like uh, what? Why do you think is that? Yeah, so we we've talked to a lot of um, principals, mentors, youth workers, psychologists, and when we were writing the script. Uh, it's, it's so many, so many things, but honestly, I think social media is the biggest thing of the explosion, what, 15 years ago, whatever. Uh, and then it's just progressively getting worse and worse and worse. So now if uh, 15 years ago, every single you know high school kid ha has not known a, a world without social media. So, so do when you can open up and compare yourselves, you know, we are naturally people of comparison, even though we may not want to, uh, you know, uh, admit that right. but we are, yeah. and you can open up six different apps and you're comparing yourself to your friends or other people or whatever, yeah. uh, is dangerous. It's very dangerous. Well, do you think that like some parents, right? Like to make their kids to not have a social media and stuff. Mm. Do you agree that kind of stuff or like, or like, do you think they should, cause like a government is trying to like like a sensor, like TikTok and all that kind of stuff, yeah. right? Like to like not ban it or whatever. Well, that's a whole another story. <laughs> right. But, but it's really very related to, yeah. yeah. So what do you, what do you think if like, cause you have a kid, right? Yeah. And then your daughter is about to be 10. Yeah. Do, when do you let your daughter have a social media? So right now she does not. Uh, okay. She has Facebook Messenger kids, which has a lot of restrictions. Gotcha. And, at the moment, we can even control. I didn't even know they had a kids yeah, messenger. A kids, and and so it's literally her and her friends. Okay. And we can control even who is accepted or not accepted as friends, and who right. they can communicate with. And that's the only people they can communicate with is who's yeah. on their friend group. So I think that's really cool, and it's actually a really good introductory into social media because exactly what you're saying is like they're going to be inundated with it at some point. It's just part, of, or they can choose not to at all, you know, which is great, but. Uh, I love how on um, apps now you can restrict amount of time just if you want to yourself. So on Instagram, I have uh, two, up to two hours a day, which I ever go over that. <laughs> and it's part of my job and searching whatever. Yeah. Then that's, for me, that's like, that's too much. Yeah. <laughs> that's way too much yeah. in a day. And I, I don't think I've ever gone over it, but it would stop. It would just straight up stop. You oh, know, nice. if you're, which um, at least on iPhones, you could do that within any app, just huh. an app itself. So I love that. So we, we can, if we're realizing our, it's like, maybe it should be 30 minutes of something, you know, and you're mm. looking at night, maybe helps you calm down or whatever else, but sh maybe shouldn't be longer than that. You know, mm. it's like, that's it kind of thing. So just knowing so yourself and your own tendencies. So your daughter said, Hey, like, she's like, let's say 13, right? Oh, she uh -huh. wants uh, on all of it right now. Oh, okay. But, we're, but you won't let her? We're not, we're not doing it yet. We're okay. not doing it yet. When, when we, is it going to be? We don't be? want her to have her own phone until she's 16. 16. To have her own phone. But she has an iPad, huh? She has an iPad. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have my phone till like I was, uh, I think, 16. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I was 16. Yeah. Yeah. 16, <laughs> 16 year old club. <laughs> yeah, I think it's crazy to me, like, you know, like, because I see a lot of kids, right, like, I mean, when I go to, like, a train or something. Yeah. And then they have, like, a little, like, a kids playground or whatever. Right. Their own iPads. Right. Not like it. Not it's like, playing there's a whole world out there. <laughs> not playing Legos or whatever, right? right? Like a building stuff. They're on iPad doing stuff. I'm like, this can't be healthy, you know? But it's not healthy. And this is, so this is uh, an example I like to share. And it's just a re really weird example, but it's just one example. But um, so say you're a kid in junior high and high school or something, and you didn't get invited to a party mm. that you really wanted to go to. Your, all your friends are there but you weren't invited. Uh, when we were in high school, 
we probably found out about it later or the next day or not at all, you know? And if we did, we're like, oh, those jerks, like, you know, whatever. But like, that's it. You know, you don't really think too much about it because it's after the fact. Right. Today, this is just one instance of not getting invited to a party. Today, mo most likely they're probably at home alone in their room and they're seeing a picture perfect picture because they took 40 selfies and yeah. posted the perfect one. And drinking beer or whatever. Yeah, or a live video that's literally real time live, you know, uh, and it that just that one of not being accepted or not being invited or whatever, that's just one situation, mm. but, it, but it, that hits way differently today than mm. it did when we were kids. I mean, that's just one tiny example. So think about all of those tiny examples that are magnified uh, and is very difficult um, mm. for youth today. So um, I don't know that, Probably this movie has that message too, but yeah. like when teen and then, you know, anybody going through like a cyber and the insecurity, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Like what is the message to those people who are going through this kind of stuff? I'm glad you asked about that. And, and yeah. the people have to check out the film, but that's mainly told through Billy in our mm -hmm. story. He, he's kind of like the social media guru. He has all the Instagram followers and he obviously the TikTok and stuff like that. He has more followers than anyone in school. But his, also his, his main crutch or main thing is reputation. Like so... There's even, I don't want to give it away, but there's a really good <laughs> conversation between him and another character. And one thing he said is, uh, am I weird? And the other character is like, yeah, you're weird. We're all weird. Uh, and he's like, yeah. Uh, but if you take all, all that away, like uh, everything that he has on social media, whatever else. Oh, because the other guy's like, yeah, we're all weird. Uh, and you have more followers than anybody in school, you know? Yeah. But he says, yeah, but you take all that away. And what left is there to love? Yeah. That's a powerful statement. Yeah. Do you think a lot of people these days and like, especially kids growing up, you know, like the days of saying, right? Like people say you work to live or you live to work. Yeah. Right. Do you think that a lot of people these days is living for the social media or social media is to create the community? Like, what do you think of that? I feel like that's how I started, right? Yeah. It's like, this is a community thing. Even watching like social network or whatever. It's like, yeah. hey, yeah, this is what we're doing here. Let's also do it digitally and we can connect faster. We could talk, you know, just in our, in our how our world is shaping up. Right. Uh, I say we're, we're slowly becoming the Wally generation. <laughs> We're, yeah, we're, then they're in space and everything. Is just, <laughs> everyone's five hundred pounds. Yeah, and, you know, just has the screen in front of them or whatever. But like, it's kind of scary. But that's what yeah. we're kind of slowly evolving. And the AI and stuff yeah, is crazy. Else. You know what I mean? I mean, even like a podcast and stuff. I can like plug in the AI yeah. system, and then it does uh, edit. Right. It's crazy. Right. But totally crazy. I, I don't mean, know if I answer your question or not. But oh no, like uh, my my. I question, think it's just mixed. Yeah. You know, it's like it live to work or work to live or whatever. It, yeah. the work to just do social stuff. I think it's all just so blended, mm -hmm. in within everything. It, that, that's yeah. the scary part. I think. Yeah. There's sometimes like I have a sometimes struggle with making the YouTube videos and like uh, doing the podcast or whatever. Sometimes, especially making a YouTube video. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I need to make this video. Yeah. So I'll get views mm. and then I act it certain way or like, you know, like I made a video about like getting punched by uh, a MMA fighter. Yeah, that was really funny. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was funny too. And then like, but I was, I do that sometime like in real life, even though camera is not here. But right. my, my girlfriend is like, you don't have to do that to get views. Right. I'm like, yeah, that's true. Mm. But it's funny. But right. like, uh, I was just curious, like, do you ever because like you seems like you're making film the one you want to make right? right the commercials and right. i don't know youtube do you ever get to the point of like you're just making content for your views rather than that's a really good passion. question so we, we don't post a lot on youtube anymore but when we started out you know a lot of people would say like okay search uh the google analytics and google trends and you know whatever else and I never was really about that. I wanted to do what we were passionate about doing. So like the very first one was the Ninja Turtle stop motion that we we recreated the 1987 intro, yeah. cartoon intro. Everyone knows that, right? Mm -hmm. Of, uh, yeah, turtle power. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so we recreated it frame by frame with toys just yeah. as a fun thing. How long did it take? It took a couple months, which isn't a couple bad. couple months. Yeah. Damn. But yeah, we, so in stop motion, by the way, we average about four seconds a day of stop motion. Wow. <laughs> uh, but as, as like a, you know, minute long, in, uh, intro, we did that and it was just something we wanted to do. Cause we thought it was, it was, we were learning a new craft and, 
But in, in my world, and I know you agree with this too, it, if we are passionate about something, that's mm-hmm. going to show. It's the intangible part that shows in the final product. Yeah, for sure. It's not just finding some trend or some other thing. It's like, oh, we'll just do this. But if you're, if you're not passionate about it, it's not going to show. Yeah. Um, so the next next one we did was X-Men, which I grew up <laughs> watching. Uh, again, same thing, same, same treatment. It's just a fan-created stop-motion thing of recreating the show's intro and theme. Right frame by frame, but that one we planned a little bit uh, and we re- we released it, and this is kind of my news background. We released it the same time there was a 20th anniversary of the show. And so that was a great, you know, like send it out to the same press. Mm. But now with it, it's not because it was trending, but because we knew something new news was happening. Uh, huh. And so we sent it out at that time and that one ev- blew up even faster. Yeah. So like you're talking about like, you know, that passion and it takes those times, right? Yeah. Because th- there's like an interesting conversation I was having with somebody else the other day. You know, like most of stuff, like a project, even like commercial or video or something like that, you spend like, let's say, uh, 80% of effort and then you get like 80% just good enough project, video or mm-hmm. music or whatever, right? And then from 80% to 100%, takes like well maybe like 90 percent to 100 percent it takes maybe 10 times as much as effort to make that oh do they get to that next level next level yeah. right yeah so like uh, some people don't go there well some people say done is better than perfect mm. some commercial work because i i have a creative agency so i gotta right. get his stuff done right but like for me like what's your take on like is there like a depends on project for you to like done is better than the perfect or like in this films and stuff such a like have that stuff but yeah i'm pretty sure it's already out uh it's gonna it's finished and you've submitted it mm-hmm. but in your head probably like oh i want to change this and all that kind of stuff right? we are still working on a few <laughs> things We're working on a couple of score pieces but yeah so that's done is better than perfect or you know is, is it more about quantity or quality yeah. you know kind of thing uh, it's, so as, uh, an agency with reckless, it's, um, it's, it has to be a balance, you know, it, you have to make money right. and you have to keep things moving. So yes, we do talking head videos that our client still loves, but makes us pretty good money, uh, in docu style videos. Um, but then we also do stop motion animation, which takes way longer than, and no one will ever understand the right. amount of hours. And we got paid well. And so, you know, most of those things are still six figure jobs, but also take, you know, six months to 10 months you right. know, kind of thing. But, um, I mean, every, every project is just different. Every, you know, is, we do a bunch of different types of storytelling. Mm-hmm. So it's live action, stop motion, short form, medium form, long form. And so it's, it's hard to say in general, like my theory is probably to have the product done over it being absolutely perfect. With that said, my level of like wanting to get it as perfect as possible is very, very high up there. <laughs> if, <laughs> is that, that is sense. that your feeling or do you have like a, cause uh, whenever I'm working on to like a build the company and build the agency, yeah. right? Like standard operation procedure and like standardizing stuff yeah. is sure necessary. Best practices, right? all those things. Yep. So about standard of the creative is hard to standardize, right? right. Cause it's cause of your eyes, your feeling, right. that kind of stuff. How, how do you standardize your stuff? So yeah, at reckless. I mean, I'm the only full-time employee. Uh, I'm the owner and operator. And then we just hire out per project. So yeah. there's so many freelancers in Oklahoma city and that has worked well for us. Uh, cause again, we do a bunch of different styles of stuff. So if we had three stop motion animators full time, I wouldn't be able to pay them all the right. time, you know, kind of thing. And we have guys like Andrew, which has worked for you before too. He's an amazing cinematographer. Uh, but if he was full time all the time, we probably could keep him working cause it's shooting and, and stuff and editing and stuff. But, every, but he has different style than what you do and other people have different, you know, uh, so everything's totally different. And so we liked, we like that and it's worked well for us of, with these national brands cause we can customize it to what they need versus when stuff comes in and then you're having to customize it to your employees, mm. if that makes sense. So you have like a worked on Disney stuff, Lego stuff, like a big companies, right? Yeah. How did you get those? Uh, we, that's a really good question. Yeah. That's, that's one of the questions we get asked all the time. It's like, Kyle, I love Lego. I've, I've grown up playing with Lego, building Lego, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, how did you get that Lego Voltron spot? And yeah. it's like, we just are awesome. No, <laughs> so that one, we, there's two agencies we work with the most, national agencies. One is Tongle 
in, let's see what I'm out of the camera, uh, the West Coast in Santa Monica, and the other is Quick Frame in New York. And so Tongle is a platform, and if you're not aware of it, you guys should submit too, but it's basically you can find gigs on there, uh, video posts, and they have the, the brief and everything on there, and then anyone can submit to it, mm. literally anybody. Uh, but like that one, we were up against 230 other people, uh, but we got it because specifically on that Lego Voltron commercial, and it was it was a national spot. Uh, they wanted live action mixed with stop motion, and the stop motion needed to be a retro recreation of the '80s Voltron stuff. And it's like, oh, we've already done that uh, <laughs> with the the X Men and the Ninja Turtle stuff. So when we submitted those things, as you know, I me mean, a lot of these brands they don't want to take any risks. Yeah, and so if you can show them something very very similar to what they're wanting, you're in. Got you, Tangle, huh? Tangle, yeah. It's kind of like a. Uh production hub but yeah. it's more of like uh there's a lot of those kind of like up work you know all that yep. kind of stuff design rush or whatever i'd say tongo's a little more higher profile paying things gotcha uh then i mean it just depends what a production hub can be yeah um upwork i would think it's typically in the lower range but maybe not maybe it's yeah. a big mix of stuff but like a design and the websites and all that kind yeah. of stuff yeah that that makes sense so this new movie, uh, you raise significantly more budget than Force Human, right? right? And absolutely. then like how how did you go about uh, raising the funds? Yeah, so it took a long time. Uh, basically, we we started talking to investors in Oklahoma. Um, we started it with like a hundred k shares in the movie. Uh, so a couple people came on board and then most people we talked to, I mean, we talked to 30, 40, 50 people and no one really wanted to be a part of it because they didn't understand the business of filmmaking, uh, which was, it was a hard pill to swallow because it's like, oh, we have this great idea and this great movie and all these things and even all of our past work, but we just didn't, we just realized in Oklahoma, they just, uh, most people don't quite, weren't quite hopping on board of investing in movies yet. Yeah. Uh, at least, at least in our conversations. <laughs> So then we started Kingdom Media Club for that reason, so it could be a fiscal sponsorship, so people can donate to it. Right. So then we did several several events. We did some events at the drive-in uh, where we brought out like Mark Marshall, who was Steven Spielberg's right hand man on Goonies, and nice. so we did a special. I think it was the 35th anniversary or something, or 40th anniversary of Goonies. And then we, I I interviewed him before the movie, and you know we also took donations and stuff there. So we were just doing different things where we we're getting out in the community, sharing. Uh, the need for Kingdom Media Club in Oklahoma and what we were trying to do. And so so part of it was funded through donations to Kingdom Media Club, and then the rest of it was uh, investors. Mm. That's nice. Yeah. And then, like, maybe, like, can you talk about, like, people say people doesn't understand film business, right? Yeah. What is your pitch to the investors? Oh, geez. So I, what I would at least hope, so if you guys start making movies or you know other other creatives in Oklahoma, that I would hope all these conversations that we're having and you're having, at least at the very least, all those meetings we did was educational for them. Yeah. Because we sure. went we went through all of it. We went through yeah. okay, this is, you know, the three stages of of production, pre-production, production, post-production. And then once you're done with the film, then it's uh, P and A, print and advertising dollars to to get the movie out. We went talk through all the distribution talk that we just talked through on here. Yeah, yeah. All these things that they have no idea. You know, oh, got you. And so and so we definitely helped educate them throughout all of that and our prospectus of like what the film could possibly do. Right. But it is all a gamble. I mean, it it, yeah. it totally is. It's it, at the bottom of the line, and we have to share this too, is that film investing is probably one of the riskiest investments out there. Yeah. Uh, only five or six percent of movies make money. That's the reality. Really? Of it. Five or six percent? Yeah. Damn. And so actually a lot of them get close yeah. and they get kind of stuck in the P&A world uh, in marketing and advertising. So like it'll do well, make about the money, mm -hmm. and then they'll spend more money to push out there more or do other. You see this even like even still today at Walmart or whatever, like the $5 bin, you know, of, of DVD stuff because they'll do more pushes of DVDs later. Yeah. 10 years later, 20 years later, you know, whatever. Yeah. But spend more money on marketing and advertising, whatever. And you kind of get stuck in that world mm. versus just continuing to make a ton of money back. God, that makes sense. sense. That makes sense. But yeah. Yeah, I got to ask though because of uh, yeah, so I, I was curious like yeah. what that conversation was. Absolutely. But also like um, you know, I do have a sister too. Yeah. You know, you're talking to me about did you did you show it to your sister? I, I haven't yet, but we we've I'm really excited for her to see it, and yeah. she's actually helped us throughout the story, and especially throughout Savannah's character. Really. Uh, and it's been 
Um, so did you re- like uh, talk to her like uh, during the script pr- mm-hmm. prices and stuff? Yeah, she helped us. She actually helped us come up with uh, a handful of really powerful lines in the movie. Oh, is she in the movie? Not in the movie. No, but yeah. Are you? Did you put yourself in the movie? I did not. Yeah, I had no. I had a, a cameo at the end of Post Human, right? <laughs> not this. I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore. <laughs> Why not? Actually, so that was we're talking about you know for views or for whatever. Yeah. Uh, the one of the things we didn't talk about and, and we don't we don't really need to, but is this reality show I got to do for Sci Fi. So we started doing all these uh, viral videos and whatever, and then I got asked to be on this reality show called Viral Video Showdown mm. on Sci Fi, where they battled viral video creators against each other. Uh, but on that show, one of the things the judges said is you need to be in your own, uh, in your own YouTube videos. And I was like, one, I'm not an actor and I'm not good at any of that, but I did that for a little bit. I was like, because it is my name and my voice and whatever, but ultimately I realized I'm way better as a director than, than, uh, trying to be in my face and anything. Yeah. I mean, like I saw like your, 48 hour film festival, right. post human, <laughs> all that stuff. You're like always like you know, cameo stuff. I thought that was cool, you know? Well, good. Well, maybe it's fun, you know, to a degree, but in, in so I probably did that for four or five years mm-hmm. as like one cameo, that fun thing. If people uh, saw it and understood, then it's fun. But ultimately, I was like, if we're really stepping all of this up, mm-hmm. uh, I just got to ditch that part. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. I mean, like, it just, <laughs> I thought that was like your thing, you know? Like, yeah. you do that every project or whatever. Yeah. I think Quantantino yeah. does it, right? Or at least, maybe not. I think, may, probably. Yeah. I know, like, the first 10, 15 years as a director, he always yeah. did. I think he still does, much. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, when you're making, like, these kind of movies and they're, like, bigger, bigger, and then, like, when you're starting, and then, like, so hiring cinematographer, hiring mm. crew, right? Hiring actors, like a director's job. I mean, kind of. Producer's job, yeah. Yeah, producer's job. All of it, all, all of it yeah. yeah. But like, a, is that change when you started like a process or like, is that something still the same to the day? Like you look for certain quality? Yeah, that's a really, really good question. Uh, so it, it's the same process, honestly, of, of whether we're doing a 30 second short or, you know, a feature length film, the questions change, you know, of, of their experience and yeah. film is, you know, 12 hour days. Uh, and we did five day weeks, which is great, but you know, every film is different and their crew position is going to be different, but that is something that excuse me, I really pride myself on too, is, um, having all those either in-person meetings or zoom calls and just connecting with them. Um, typically I will hire someone slightly less experience, but I see more passion in them because I believe they're going to give 110%. Gotcha. Um, what's the, what's the question you ask to figure that out? I just start talking to them. So in, in, in some ways, like if they're just, they're being like really shy or whatever else, yeah. or you start asking questions about this or that. And one, if they say they're expert at everything <laughs> that can be a thing of like, Oh, okay, maybe not this person, <laughs> uh, but then you can ask more specific things, you know, yeah. about their job or about, you know, what they've done in the past. And, I, I always like to ask people like, you know, what was one of their favorite experiences? What was one of their least favorite experiences and try to hear from them hmm. why, you know, the, the why to all of those questions too. But got you. Yeah. I do have a one uh, question I ask every, every hire I do yeah. is the first thing I ask is uh, three words to describe their value value. Oh, nice. Uh, so like I get to know like a little bit and then I ask them like, do you, uh, well, what is it? Like, uh, let's just ask you. My my what? three three values. Like a most important value, like the words, like maybe by one love. word. Yeah. Awesome. No. <laughs> uh, man, I put on the spot here. Three words. I'm gonna say radical. Okay. Because that has to do with the voice, radically family friendly. Um. Leader and compassion here we go see that tells a lot of things right radical leadership and compassion and then i will ask uh do you think the rules are meant to be broken or kept broken 100 percent. okay cool <laughs> right and then you know manholes on the street mm-hmm. why do you think manholes are cover cir- uh, around so why is that shape is circle um, so the Ninja Turtles can get in and out. Very <laughs> Good answer. Has anyone ever answered that? <laughs> no. <laughs> but that third question actually does have a wrong answer and the right answer. The wrong answer is I don't know. Okay. 
because I'm not going to hire people who can't think. Right. And then the right answer is the manhole is circle because the circle is the only shape that doesn't go down. Because mm. if it's like a square or something like that, if you turn it this way, it will fall down. Oh, right. But uh, but if I if I hear somebody is like trying to come up with some logical answer, it yeah. will pass kind of my test, I guess. Gotcha. Then like, okay, this guy can't think or whatever. <laughs> yeah, know? right. That's the kind of three question I ask. But gotcha. But uh, so I think I'm gonna have a uh, Giselle on my podcast. I think. Oh, nice. June eighth, I cause like a premiere or something happening. We yeah. So yeah, uh, June eighth through the eleventh is our world premiere for the film, and mm -hmm. it's gonna be at Dead Center Film Festival. Uh, and I believe they're trying to figure out all the dates right now. I believe we're gonna be the opening night film, um, oh, which is the the, the the highest honor uh, at a festival. Highest honor. Congratulations. <laughs> So let, let's uh, let me talk. Uh, what what's what is like to working with Giselle? Uh, she was amazing. So Giselle Torres uh, is a YouTube star. She has like three million followers on YouTube. Uh, she has done a lot of singing and acting, but also writing and directing uh, her own shorts. And a lot of them are music video um, short films. You know, kind of almost like Michael Jackson you know, <laughs> style, where it totally is a short film, but it is a musical piece as well. Yeah. Um, she is also on a Disney show right now, um, Villains of Valley View. Mm. That's really fun. And she has a really fun character on there where she messes with a lot of the heroes. Or that, they're actually villains, but she's a villain in school. Mm. Uh, it's like a bully <laughs> kind of thing, <laughs> actually. Which is a totally different character than <laughs> she plays in this. Uh, but in our film, she plays Rena Jones. Uh, and her main thing is just expression. So she's she is a singer songwriter in our film. Uh, her brother Zach is in is in the movie, um, and they um, their father ha has has done something to where um, he is not with them anymore. Mm. Uh, and they both have dealt with that totally different ways. Zach is getting in fights a lot and and, and acting out aggression and rage and all these other things. And then she kind of turned towards music mm. and poetry. And so we really get to see those different expressions and the two of them throughout the film. Got you. Yeah. How did you uh, uh, cast her? Yeah. So uh, Zach and Rena, we did not know exactly the, the direction we want to go. We actually wrote them as Native American at first. And then we were trying to figure out what makes sense and whatever else. And once we really started getting auditions, we had thousands and thousands of people audition for them. And uh, we went a Hispanic route and Latino route. And they uh, both crushed it. They absolutely crushed it. Hmm. That's awesome. Well, let me ask you this question I asked to everybody on this podcast. Um, 2018, that's five years ago. Okay. What were you doing in 2018? 2018. So this is two years pre-COVID. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, we were writing this movie. We this were, movie? Yeah, we were getting, you know, we were writing it, trying to figure out what we were going to do. Uh, I think we were probably even having very preliminary conversations with potential investors. And I will tell you at that time, I feel like most people thought we were lying about mental health statistics. I think they just didn't. I mean, there, there were similar statistics then. They've grown exponentially mm. uh, exponentially now. But when we were talking about, you know, youth suicide and all these, other, I think, and depression and anxiety and a lot of business, com the business community that we were talking to, either they were, they just were blind or unaware of it, you know? Uh, so I'm, I'm just curious, like yeah. whenever you were talking to, you were making this movie, you say you were talking to a bunch of psychologists and doctors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the biggest takeaway you learned from that, like an interview process? Yeah. I mean, we heard so many things. Uh, me, social media is the, the number, the number one, probably reoccurring thing that everyone yeah. has talked about. Um, because of that, they compare themselves to other people. Yeah, people. We are naturally people of comparison, and gotcha. when you can do that at any given time, it just happens in the back of our mind. Yeah, you know, and it's it's dangerous. What is the, like a? Did you kind of like a hear or like a got advice to cure those stuff or advice to what? Like for example, like you saying like a human is a naturally compared to other people, right? right? Like looking at social media, mm -hmm. whenever you're talking to those doctors and expert, mm -hmm. like, do they have a, like advice to not do that? Yeah, sometimes. Um, so one thing we kind of came to a conclusion with of talking to a lot of different people, and especially in the, the, the approach that we have is like a family friendly film too, is we did not want to show an actual attempt at suicide. And that actually came from, we had different versions of it where even if it's like, 
taking a pill, alluding to something, and then you don't see, you know, it's not like a gunshot to the head or a noose or what you've seen, you know, seen in other things. Yeah. But we didn't ever even want to show that. We talk about thoughts of suicide. We talk about things. And even the film uh, opens up with this um, memorial on a kid's locker who committed suicide. Mm. So it just opens up like this is the world they live in. Yeah. Which is which is the sad state. Probably any given school, the 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 school. So even like Oklahoma City schools, they'll probably go through three or four during their high school experience. Just friends, mm. people that they may know, may know, maybe best friends with, may have had you know social studies with or something. Yeah, but they just end up taking their you know, taking their life. Yeah. Um. But but that was one of the things we really gathered is that. And we learned is that we just did in this film, we did not want to show an attempt at suicide because what that can do subconsciously is uh, give you an idea of how how to accomplish it. Got you. That makes sense. I mean, honestly, like uh, I was talking to, um, you know, Philip Paz. Yes. Yeah. So I was having a conversation uh, uh, in the podcast because he's a very um, uh passionate about the veteran suicide and mm. all that kind of stuff but he he was saying like best thing to like prevent it is like if you see someone acting not normal mm. then ask them say are you okay right. or if you can't ask them directly yeah ask somebody else if they're doing okay to let them talk to that yeah. person or whatever yeah i thought that was like a very powerful advice or statement or whatever yeah so. and it takes those best friends right like yeah. it takes people that understand them it's like you are not yourself right now yeah can you so that that's 100 percent what this film is about oh, okay it is uh we have this song it's a local band from tulsa called tree giants and it's called better together and oh tree the, giant yeah do you know tree giants yeah yeah, yeah. they're awesome yeah they're awesome yeah so their song better together is kind of our main like anthem in the film and, man and this is such a small world because of the my First demo reel I made like five years ago for Gen M Creative yeah. was Tree Giant song. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. They're so cool. Yeah. And when we really started looking at, you know, everything we do, um, music is such a, a, a important part of it. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, even post human, we have like 16 licensed tracks. Oh, nice. Along with the score tracks. And people don't know the difference of that. Yeah. A licensed track is a song that's already made. It's oh. by, most likely by a band, is produced, and then you're acquiring that track for the the film series whatever yeah and then score is something you're composing specifically yeah. for scenes and for the movie uh but yeah that film had like 16 license tracks. this one also has like 14 or 15 license tracks oh nice along with the score in the film so if you guys liked post-human uh you're gonna love this film because it's a lot of the same themes and voice and voice but at just a whole other level nice we're so excited to bring to the world oh yeah i mean i'll i'll listen to the tree giant song too. yeah yeah. I mean, Tree Giant, if you're looking at it, like I'll need an intro song for podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be rad. Because they have they're, all their, their background stuff and like all their, yeah, every, yeah. yeah. They're good. They're awesome. But anyways, going back to 2018, yeah. right? Because the question I ask for everybody is what advice you give yourself? Um, five years. Five years ago. What would I give myself then? Yeah. Uh, just don't stop. Because there was, there was a time uh, about then... There's, I mean, this whole process has been so long, you know, but I knew that this was my calling, specifically this film and what we're trying to do. And uh, there are so many times where I almost gave up. I mean, it's, it's really hard. I mean, doing something for seven years and, you know, especially at the beginning of that, people just telling us no and no and no. and Because no. you couldn't raise money or something? Yeah. Or, yeah. And it's like, you know, I knew we needed a certain amount to do it justice and to truly you know, our approach to this is earning the right to be heard from youth. Yeah. Uh, you know, I wasn't going to do something that was the same look and feel and budget of post-human. Right. You know, it needed to be better. Yeah. And um, I wasn't going to sacrifice that. Yeah. But but it was hard. Yeah. I mean, you did it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> congratulations. Exactly. Thank you. I mean, why, why does the movie cost that much? I mean, it's just everything. So even, so one thing I'm really proud about this film yeah. that we haven't really had in the past is an amazing colorist. So our colorist, uh, his name is Alex Martin. Alex, if you're watching, shout out. Uh, but he was like the right hand man colorist for uh, freaking uh, Michael Bay for like five years. And so he lives in San Diego, but he's he's also a believer and believes in us and this project. And we, so we started talking about it. He's like, dude, I'll do that. And so it was a little bit of money, but it at the film looks beautiful. Andrew obviously is a great cinematographer, but Alex took the color to a whole other level. Nice. 
I can't, I can't imagine. I'm just laughing my head <laughs> that about like you explaining how important this color is to this movie to the investors. Right, they would have no clue. They're like, so there's color added. So I'm not to make fun of our investors. No, but honestly, we found some really amazing investors、yeah. uh, that have just been. So it, it took a while to get there, but、yeah. once others started jumping on, then others started jumping on. Yeah. And、uh, there's really one or two that、uh, were creatives as well, and、mm. so I think that's where they saw, they truly saw our, our vision and what we were doing. That is awesome. Yeah. Man, I, I I love like people that just making movies, telling stories, and then I mean so much passion about. And then like sometimes whenever I'm making the commercials and stuff, you know, like man, I need a true passion stuff. You、right. know, that's why it's like I mean for me like an outlet is YouTube and stuff. Like because、right. I don't have a patient for like seven year long, you know, <laughs> and like podcasts or whatever. I think the things I want to do. But、uh, what about five years later? That'll be twenty twenty eight. What, how do you see yourself in five years? Keep doing this. So we have, we have a ten year plan, and it's a it's a slate of films and series.、Mm. They're all coming of age stories.、Mm-hmm. Uh, they're all I would say faith adjacent stories,、mm-hmm. similar to this, and、uh, they're all deal deal with stories of identity and purpose, but totally different things.、Mm. And so that's something we're really really excited about, and to to keep bringing to the world, keep fighting the good fight. Nice. I mean, like、uh, the other day,、uh, I think like a couple months ago, I was at the bar, and then I was in like a kind of like a mental health kind of down、mm. time or whatever, and then the fam- my family stuff going on or whatever, and then I was debating myself if I'm gonna do the MMA fight or、mm. not, or、right. the sacrifice or whatever, or not. But、uh, the guy I met was a.、Uh, Previously, he worked here as a web designer.、Yeah. I met him for some reason, right? And then at the bar, like he was there, and then he was like, "We," he's like, "So happy to see me." We were talking to each other,、yeah. and then like he was telling me how he met his wife and all that kind of stuff. And then he was telling me like, "You know what? Like, what's your life goal, Yosuke?" And then he asked me, and then like he he told me his life goal was like,、uh, "Man, my life goal is I'm gonna drink a beer in every continent." That's his. Hey, that's a heck、goal. of a goal. Yeah, <laughs> I thought so too. And then he asked me like, "What is my life goal?" And then I couldn't say it because I had a like five year goal, ten year goal, whatever,、yeah. right? But what is your life goal? I'm just curious. I don't know if I am necessarily thinking about it as that far in that future.、Yeah. I feel like、uh, I want to continue to listen to what God wants me to do and, and answer the call,、uh, be ready to answer the call.、Uh, but I I feel like at the moment. We were talking about this earlier too. Like, what was calling? What's our purpose? Like at the moment, God is calling me to ensure that teenagers know that there is life after high school,、mm. which is sounds so silly, you know, to say. But I, I feel like I don't think that's going to cure suicide, taking their life. But it, when they're in their own bubble, they're in their own world. They think that's it. You know, I, I remember even at, at times、uh, where it's hard for you to picture. Your, try, your brain is developing its synapses, you know all this other stuff. It's hard for you to picture life after high school.、Mm. You know, it's like this is the whole world that I know. Yeah. And if that's where you feel like that's there's there could be nothing past that, it's just gone. You know, like if that's if that's what you all you have to know and think about,、uh, it could be it could be easier to just end it.、Mm. Um, so through that, and then also like a, a, a hashtag we use a lot in this is tomorrow needs you. That's beautiful. Every day, so whether that's today or in、yeah. a week or in five years, tomorrow needs you. Damn, that is a beautiful saying. When is this come up? <laughs> June eighth. <8th, laughs> June eighth premiere, and they, then they a lot. We're, we're we're still trying to sell the film. Yeah. Most likely, we're looking at a September-ish release, either theatrically or on, on video on demand or whatever. Okay.、But. This center, I need to be there. Do it, dude. <laughs> I'd love to have you. Yeah, this center. This center is getting bigger and bigger every year. Every year. Well. Last few years, it's gotten smaller because、oh, of, yeah, of COVID. Yeah, but they they honestly feel like they'll probably be back to the thirty to thirty five k people this year.、Mm. Is there anything else I didn't ask you wanted to share? Man, you've done great. Oh, you've thanks. Done a great job. I'm trying to like, and I'm reading books. You know, like、oh, I want to do a compilation video of like. Year after year of how my English gets better year. year, year. <laughs> Is it getting better? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You know what I love about this show?、Uh, I feel like you are too, and I'm totally this way. Is I'm naturally curious 
to learn and explore how people have got to where they are mm. and whatever they do. And yeah. that's totally what this is totally what this show is. Yeah. And that's why I love watching, you know, watching it. And stuff. Oh, thank it's you. Just, yeah, I'm so totally curious. Cause like I met you and then like, I knew like the guy, the, the, the moment I met you, like, yeah, okay, you're a creative guy, you know, and then like, okay, you're a director, like you got the create a uh, direct, director vibe. Okay, he's been because like you're talking about right, like about high school. Mm -hmm. You just see that moment, right? Because right. like I judge you yeah. in the moment of the okay, this guy is a director of movie set. I yeah. don't, I have no idea about what you've done before. Right, you know? sure. So I think it's it's fascinating to me to see what they've been going through and then what right. they're like behind the scene and then all that kind of stuff and then people put it in that box, you know. Yeah. I hate it, you know. <laughs> so I have a question for you. Go ahead. Speaking about this and speaking about, you know, everyone's uh, journey that mm -hmm. they've taken, their path that they take. I mean, what are, what are some of the common threads that you hear of, you know, of how people got to where they are? Is it determination? Is it passion? Is it, you know, what is it? Is it a certain skill set? I think that um, what I realized, I think you're a uh, 29th person mm -hmm. I interviewed throughout this podcast journey. And that every single person on this podcast is somebody I respect. Mm. And then somebody who have made successful either or like on the way to be super successful. Yeah. Well, this is the first one that it's not. So <laughs> no, no, thank you for having me. No, no, no. This is great. <laughs> you're, you're successful. <laughs> but but my point is that people who just did it. Mm. Like, I think it just is that simple. Yeah. Like uh, people, I talk to people outside of this podcast room and then a lot of people ask me advice or yeah. ask hearing that their complaints, excuses, or they don't know what to do, what like going on. Those people behind you, all, all the pictures we have, every person just did it. Right. Like, okay, I want to do this, did it. You say you want to make the YouTube video, did it. Right. I think that's just the only things to... Common denominator. Common thing is... Because it's just that simple, right? Because yeah. if you want to do it, yeah. if you want to make a movie, make it. Well, what do they say? 10% 10, 10 of, of creatives, probably just people that are going to do anything, have an idea about something, yeah. act on it. And then 10% of that 10% yeah. even get close to completing it. Yeah. And 10% of that 10% complete it. Yeah. <laughs> so then you're in like a point something percentage of people that have an idea and truly want to do something yeah. that actually do it. Yeah. And so. then sometimes I do think about that though, because like, Sometimes I need like a challenge for myself to do it like very, very like hard stuff. Sure. Like, uh, you know, I need a marathon challenge or like MMA challenge or something like that. Like I might to, like to just, motivate you. Yeah. Like I might just sick or like, you know, like I might just, well, I might just like torturing myself, you know, like, yeah. but like, okay, I'm doing it. And then like other people, like as people who are successful, like you're going through like sometimes passion could be like, too much mm. right because like i'm pretty sure in this like making movie seven years of process you probably went through a dark times right yeah <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> and then like probably your family and all that kind of stuff so you, like a little bit of sacrifice is made you know right and then 100%. like where is that line of like healthy passion and then maybe like to be good at it or to if you're passionate and compassion something if you want then you have to be that crazy sometime that's a balance i don't know right. but maybe if you know <laughs> i learned a lot from post human by the way yeah. on that's film i just did everything and, yeah. I, that, and i didn't do everything i did everything i could to just make sure it was yeah. done yeah uh including you know we had like 420 visual effects in that film and i did like 400 of them yeah uh i was working at the oklahoma at the same time i was doing post so they post for 10 months uh, so I did it on nights and weekends. I remember I scheduled like four nights a week. I'd work till 4 a.m. and take a nap and then go to work, you know, Damn. the next day. So that's why I knew, but it all, I almost got divorced from that. Like it was so strenuous on my wife and I at the time. And we were about to have Sloan, our, our first daughter, and everything was was uh, about to hit the fan, right? Like, I mean, it was, it was so hard and we got it out there and it took time. Like I wasn't even ready to even think about another future for a while. I just, I just was, I couldn't. Yeah. Um, but also through that was a lot of motivation for me. Of like we have to get a bigger budget than we had before <laughs> because I can't do all these things and I can't keep uh, 
uh, like putting my wife and kids on the line and now right. I have two girls yeah. and it's like, I can't do that to them. Yeah. So, but as a creative, like I'm finding this balance of, uh, say two summers ago, we, we produced this reality show for Nerf called Nerf House Showdown. And I don't know if you've heard of that or not, but like mm -hmm. Jimmy Fallon even mentioned it on the Tonight Show, oh, cool, cool. which is super fun. But, um, we did that for the whole summer pretty much. Uh, so I was busy like that whole summer. Uh, but then I, I pretty much took like five months off. Mm. And so I just hung out with my family. I had a lot of downtime. I mean, I was picking my kids up from school every day and just hanging out with them and just getting as much of that family time as possible because mm. I didn't know when that was going to happen again. Mm. You know, as, as a business, local business owner, uh, like I, I, you just don't know, you know, when money comes in, it comes in and you got to work really hard. And so, yeah, fi finding that balance can be tricky. It's um, tricky. And then I got, do you, after post human and all that kind of stuff, like, do you tell your um, wife say, "Hey, I'm gonna be busy this much, right? For till this <laughs> what this uh, this month of period." So thankfully, yeah, with this film, it was more structured like a regular film. Post we did nights and weekends, and we shot it over seven months or something. Yeah. <laughs> like it was just a very very independent filmmaker. Yeah. You know, this uh, we shot it over five weeks, uh, yeah. normal five five day weeks, you know, kind of thing. So it was really crazy five weeks. But she knew she was going to have me back as soon as that was done. Oh, okay. So that's good. Right. You know, at least like, I think communication is key, right? right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I think that that's, uh, that's uh, something every creative and every business owners go through is that, yeah, it's their passion and life, but right. you know, there's, there's family, family is important. Right. Yeah. It's the most important. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to uh, plug in and sh shout out? I think this is it, man. I mean, just it's mainly for us, it's all about this film and getting this message of hope out there. Um, come see it at Dead Center yeah. June 8th through the 11th. And then hopefully sometime uh, in the fall, it'll release to the world. So Perfect. And then when that happens, I'll just change the link. <laughs> so that link in the description to download or watch yes, this video. It says video. it's going to be right here. <laughs> Man, <laughs> editor will hate it, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, so, wow, thank you very much for everybody to come on this show. And uh, if you're on the YouTube, please comment, like, and subscribe, all the good stuff. And if you're listening to a podcast platform, give me a five stars. Probably do a nice things for my podcast. And then, yeah, it's getting downloaded. It's getting big. So iTunes, Spotify, anything, whatever. But Thanks, Kyle, for again for coming to the show. And then see you guys next Friday. Peace.